Hey everyone, what is next in cloud native? Well, I had a chance to talk to Chris Anacek, CTO at CNCF, who had a little perspective of his own. There are three main themes that Chris brings up. One is the Rust programming language and WebAssembly. Two, cloud-based IDEs. And three, security, in particular software supply chain security. Now, Rustline, now talk about a language that is getting popular. We've been writing about it a lot, and apparently a lot of new projects at the CNCF are using Rust. And what does that say about the ecosystem? I'm seeing a trend of, of Rust becoming a lot more uh, commonplace um, in, in, in projects. Um, uh, part of that, I do think, is also related to there's a lot of interest in, um, you know, WebAssembly, you know, these days, and a lot of the kind of uh, core WebAssembly community, there's a lot of rust there. And so that I think just naturally brings brings it into the, to, to CNCF. Well, let's just take a few projects. For example, Project Acri from Microsoft DS Labs is a device discovery technology that is written in Rust. Parsec is also written in Rust. It's described as a platform abstraction for security that provides an API to hardware security and cryptographic services. Crustlet, also written in Rust, is a Kubernetes kubelet for running WebAssembly. WebAssembly came out of Mozilla for sandboxing tabs in the browser. Today, WebAssembly is often used with Rust. Wasma, as it's well known, is popular as there has not been a runtime like it's seen before. Now it's getting adopted to adapt to cloud native environments through projects such as WASI, which is a system interface to run WebAssembly outside the web. It is a very stripped down runtime that could support multiple languages and it's very lightweight and it could run in very constrained environments, something that we haven't really had before, right? You know, this is the first time we have something that's truly, uh, you know, lightweight kind of very secure, uh, you know, by, by default. Cloud native IDEs. There's a general trend of shifting toward code doing the work for us. Whether it's configuration, management, security, it's shifting. It's all getting moved closer to where developers are doing their work. GitOps, for example, defines the configuration of an application. It then gets reconciled by services such as Flux or Argo. This move is also evident in developer environments with things like GitHub code spaces and Gitpod. Amazing. It's like living the dream that, you know, I, I spent a lot of years working on developer tools, things such as Eclipse a long time ago, but being able to have a development environment that's like already pre-built, loaded with something that you could share as a, a reusable artifact across, you know, other you know, teams and other developers is just, it, it, it's awesome. But the whole trend here is a lot of the stuff is just shifting closer to where a developer does their normal, you know, programming and, and so on. Security. Cloud native security is arguably the hottest of topics that points to what is next in the cloud native world. There were so many cloud native security startups at KubeCon. The popularity of Rust is testament to this new interest and the number of projects that we're seeing increasingly have a security focus. You only have to look at Open Policy Agent to see that. And if you looked at the pre-conference events, almost every one touched on security topics. It's a way of having development environment consistency, consistency and also it's potentially more, more secure. Like you don't need to actually, you know, check everything out locally, get it all tweaked. You can actually provision a development environment, you know, live from the cloud. I think a lot of companies are going to go favor that approach because it's more secure. They could lock it down uh, and, and, and so on. So I think that's the big change you'll, uh, you'll, you'll see. And in conclusion, let's just review those three again. We have Rust, the programming language, cloud-based IDEs, and security. And then what comes next? GitHub Actions? Is that a thing? Is that a sign of things to come? Is a fully programmable world upon us? Are the machines going to do the programming for us? You can just feed all those configurations into a neural net, right? Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. And make a training model and, yeah. you know, and the software yeah, builds itself. Exactly. Copilot style. You get your provisioned, uh, you know, IDs and you get a little robot, you know, friend to go write most of your stuff that you need to get done throughout the day. It's great. <laughs> Stay tuned.